Man City versus Arsenal predicted lineup. After a two day absence, let's just say back again FC is in full effect. As Arsenal travel to Manchester City, as Mikel Arteta once again comes up against Pep Guardiola. And with Arsenal having not won a away game against a big six side since 2015, Mikel Arteta is going to have to get his lineup on point. And the real question is, are we going to have a party? So with that being said, guys, welcome back to Boys Channels. Two days off, but we are back again. Apologies. Here we go. Predicted lineups. Let's have some. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Bavs14 and welcome back to Boys Channel. This video has been kindly sponsored by the guys at OneFootball. And if you don't know what OneFootball is, then listen up lads. OneFootball is one of the best apps on the footballing market when it comes to staying up to date with team news, transfer news, results and fixtures, as well as some stats as well. OneFootball is the app for you. And so if you guys can do your Boys Channel a massive favour and go down into the description and download the OneFootball app, it will be massively appreciated. Also drop a like on the video and do subscribe to the channel if you are new we're closing into 30,000 and as always get in the comments let me know your thoughts and also your personal predictions but with that being said guys predictor lamps we're back man city away here we go right first things first formation i'm gonna go for a full free free now i understand arsenal fans there are quite a few guys that want to see the five at the back or the three at the back whatever you want to call it and also let's not forget we did be man city with this exact same formation in the fa cup semi final last season and so i I can see the comments saying, Babs, you are so stupid. How are you not going to play the back three? Well, that's because, lads, I have a very good reason being a massive party. With Arsenal signing of Thomas Partey, if he is to start, I think Arteta can finally go for his preferred midfield three. And for me, if we are to go for a back three, we would be outnumbered in midfield. De Bruyne, Bernardo Silva, Gundogan, Fernandinho, and Rodri. Don't get me started. And so for Arsenal to match Man City in midfield, we're going to have to go for a midfield three. And for me, I'm going to go for the full three three system but then again lads i also do understand the back three has sailed as well so lads get in the comments and let me know what formation would you go for the back three or the back four let me know your thoughts in the comments below moving on lads goalkeeper of course is going to be man like burnt leno now listen man like alex ronaldson i understand that you're here but at the same time let's put some respect on my goalkeeper's name of course the last time we played man city our goalkeeper was man like Emiliano Milano martinez but my man is no longer at the club so let's not even talk about it but let's put Respect on Lerner's name. This guy was our second best player last season and saved us from embarrassment so, so many times. And this guy for me is still a world-class goalkeeper. I understand he is not the best when it comes to catching the ball and coming for crosses. But then for me, his overall goalkeeping is kicking and most importantly, his clutch top corner saving cannot be underestimated. And that's why I want a bit more respect on my goalkeeper's name. But Leno and go away we go. Moving on to right back lads, I'm going to go for Hector Bellerin. Now, man like Hecky B, are we seeing a bit of a remontada? Under our terror initially, Bellerin, of course, came out from injury. And a lot of fans were saying, oh, Bellerin's done, sell him, get him to Barcelona, whatever. But you know what? You have to now give credit where credit is due. We are now seeing the Hector Bellerin that we know is there deep down. And we know he has the ability to play at this level as well. And even if we are to cast our minds to Arsenal's last game in the Premier League, to assist beautiful teams. And let's put some respect on Bellerin's name as well. Now, then again, I also understand that we do have man like 50, man like easily meant the Niles but for me with the form that Hector Bellerin is in I don't think you can drop man like Hecky and for me I would go for Hector Bellerin right back but yeah lads let me know your thoughts in the comments Bellerin, Mate the Niles or even man like Cedric Suarez I don't know get in the comments and let me know your thoughts moving on to the first centre back right centre back David Luiz here we go indeed now I understand off the fans are in the comments going Babs are you short of memory are you forgetting the last time what happened when Arsenal went to the Etihad and David Luiz himself now don't don't get twisted that performance still hurts me it scars me from inside it hurts me to this day but then again since that game David Luiz has had a somewhat of a mini remontada he's come back into the Arsenal team he's been somewhat dare I say reliable and he's been overall pretty solid and if you even go to the FA Cup semi-final against Man City David Luiz was arguably our man 
of the match. Then again, lads, I understand with WWE, this guy is a ticking time bomb, and so I don't want to overhype him too much. But with his ball playing ability and his experience as well, I am going to go for David Luiz. But then again, of course, we have man like Rob Holdinho. So, lads, get in the comments and let me know who would your right centre back be. Moving on to left centre back, it's going to be man like Gabriel Magalhães. Hey, yo, listen, Mikel, my manager. I understand what you're trying to do, and I trust the process more than anyone in this world. But if you are to dare drop my centre back in this game, I'm a big game away from home, then we are going to have to have a conversation. Now, of course, what I am referring to is Arsenal's game at Anfield in the Premier League when we lost 3 1, where Gabriel was left on the bench for holding Luis and Tini. I understand this is a new environment, it can take time to adapt, but then again, have you seen this guy perform in the games they started? Fulham, man of the match, West Ham, man of the match, Liverpool, man of the match, and also now Arsenal's player of the month as well. What else does my man have to do to prove himself? We know what we have there a solid ball playing centre back, and that for me is the key. The way he breaks the lines, especially with a team like Man City who are going to press, Gabriel Magalhães is going to be very, very key. I'm not even going to ask any questions. For me, Gabriel Magalhães, left centre back, has to start. Moving on to left back, lads. Oh, we're going to have to go for Kieran Tini. Now, I say that with a bit of doubt, and that is because COVID 19, the coronavirus, has struck once again. Now, there is no need to get worried, lads. Tini does not have the virus, thank God for that. But the context right now, Arsenal are negotiating with the Scottish FA as with one of their players testing positive, Tierney has been put into quarantine. Now listen, I understand we have to take this virus very seriously and of course it's bigger than football. But then again, Tierney has had a test and he has tested negative. He doesn't have the virus. So if we were to think logically here, if Tierney doesn't have the virus, then why on earth and what is he quarantining for? And if he isn't to play in this game, we are going to have massive, massive issues. On one hand, you have Tesco's bodyguard, NCAA Kalashnikov, and then you have Tesco's finest in man like Carantini. And for me, hopefully Arsenal can agree something with the Scottish FA, but if they can't, then it has to be Sayad Kalashnikov. And that, to me, I am not looking forward to. But yeah, lads, let's get some prayers in the comments. Let's pray to God. Hopefully, we can see K Tesco's fighting a start in this game. Carantini, we are praying God. Moving on to the midfield, central defense midfielder, Granite Xhaka. Now, to the lads that want to have the party, we're going to have to hold it for a second. Because in terms of the deep line player, I'm going to go for Granite Xhaka. Now, of course, I understand quite. If you ask the fans, think this is going to be the position of Thomas Partey. But let's put the party on hold for just a second. Because in terms of man at Granite Xhaka, under me, character, you have to put respect on his name. He's performed very well yes he's had his odd few moments but overall been very solid and especially in the big games he's performed as well and also a very underrated feature of Grand Jacker is the way he commands the back four now as you guys know your boy is a massive fan of Arteta ball they're passing out of the back and if you look at all those goals all the big goals Arsenal scored look at Jacker. he's constantly pointing pass there pass there he's the commander he's the manager on the pitch again I understand Jacker isn't always the most reliable but then again under Mikel Arteta this guy has been nothing short of solid so for me Grand Jacker is going to start in that CDM role. Moving on to the right side of the advanced midfielder, Thomas Partey. Let the Partey begin! And that is right lads, in this game I believe Thomas Partey could and is going to start. And we also had confirmation from the man himself in an interview, him in the Arsenal shirt saying that he's ready, he's fit and he is ready to start for the Arsenal. Now the question really is, is Mikel Arteta going to start him? Because as we've seen in the past already with players like Gabriel Magalhães at Anfield, he didn't start in the Premier League because he didn't think he was ready. And so with Partey only joining Arsenal just a week ago, the beautiful scenes on deadline day. Is Arteta really going to throw him straight in the team up against a team like Man City as well, away from home? But then again, lads, the Partey cannot be stopped. And also, let's not forget, Partey is coming from a team like Atletico Madrid. And their manager, Diego Simeone, drills their players for big games. And with the way Arsenal play in big games, when we sit back and hit on the counter-attack, Thomas Partey is tailor-made currently for that system as well. And so not only does he offer us that powerhouse in midfield, Field, but also a very key thing is his dribbling out of the back as well and so when you come up against a side like Manchester City who are very good at pressing they want to press as high as possible when you then have a human hack in Thomas Partey you can just bounce around the midfield powerhouse his way through of course you're gonna have to start him and so now the question really is for Arteta Mikel are you going to give us our Partey lads let me know your thoughts in the comments below is Thomas Partey going to start moving on to the second advanced midfielder Danny Ceballos Mr. Estrella and Mr. Pai the midfield three of Xhaka, Ceballos and also Partey does look like a very solid midfield. Now I understand that it is lacking a bit of creativity and if we had a certain Houston hour we might have started him in this game but alas that did not happen and now we're gonna have to move on with our lives. 
In terms of that Tobias, I think now that we've got Partey and Xhaka, a very solid base there. I would not be surprised if Tobias was to become a more attack man in midfielder. And after all, lads, he does have the ability, he has the key passes, the dribbling ability, and also has a long shot on him as well. And he has also shown glimpses so far this in that he has the attacking prowess. And over for me, a midfield three of Xhaka, Partey and Tobias, a very solid midfield three that can sit back and counter at devastating fashion. And so lads, get in the comments and let me know your midfield threes you'd have. Jaka party spice for me. Let me know yours in the comments below. Moving on to the front three right winger Nicolas Pepe. I said the CEO of Presence Blood MC in this game, Mikel. Make no mistake, you're gonna have to start man like Nicolas Pepe. Now, I understand that you are a fan of man like Willian, man like William, but at the same time, he does not offer us that same explosive ability that Pepe has and the overall quality as well when it comes to getting goals as well. And we saw that firsthand in that game against Sheffield United. He came off the bench and we Within minutes, Arsenal went from 0-0 to 2 0 up. You'll have to see it. And what we saw Pepe on the right hand side was a player who was explosive, linking up with Hector Bellerin, and overall a goal scoring threat as well. On one hand, I do appreciate the creativity Willian offers us. And for me, it has come to that stage now where we need to see more of Pepe, more goals, more assists, and overall more of Presence Blood FC. But yeah, lads, get in the comments and let me know would you start Nicolas Pepe in this game? For me, it is a no brainer. Moving on to the striker, centre forward, Pierre Emreco Bamay. Young. Left winger, na na na. Put it to one side. I understand that Arata, he started most of his games as that left winger. But I want to cast two minds back to that game against Sheffield United. It was only after Bamming was central, Pepe on the right, and William on the left, where we saw a more fluid front three that worked and also scored their goals. Now, I personally really appreciate Inketia, and I also do like a bit of Alexandre Lacazette. But at the same time, for me, I think we're almost wasting a Bamming out wide, especially in the current form and system we're playing in. Because, yes, right now we are making chances, but for most of them they're down the middle and as you guys remember so painfully it was like as it was played down the middle at Anfield to equalize and he missed the opportunity now you're telling me if that's Aubameyang I will go to bit winner I will go to striker you think he doesn't finish that and so in this game for me I am gonna start Malak Aubameyang down the middle and for me it's a no-brainer he's far more of a threat he's far more of a goal scorer and he's our go-to player Aubameyang down the middle Mikel I don't want to hear it anymore and Freddy Lads left winger Bukayo Saka I said my Number seven, and that is right. Like to complete the team and complete the front three. But Kyle Saka left wing, it is a no brainer. Of course, if we are to move Obama down to the middle, that leaves a massive hole at the left wing role. And yes, you have the likes of William. For me, Saka just trumps him. He has more pace, he has more creativity, and for me, is more of an overall threat. And overall, also, when in the defensive phase, he is a very solid player as well. And so, for me, a front three of Pepe, Obama, and Saka has pace, has power, and overall can be a very clinical front three. I will cause Man City a lot of issues as well. But yeah, lads, get in the comments and let me know your front three. Who would you go for? Willian, Lacazette, and Ketia, Oba, Laka, or of course, Man Lamba, Kaio Saka. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And so there you guys go. That is my final lineup. Of course, let's see what Man Laka Tear goes for. And also, let me know yours in the comments below. But with that being said, guys, of course, if you have enjoyed the video, so much sure to go down there, drop a like on the video, and also do subscribe to the channel if you are new. Do your boys' channel a massive event and download the one football app the links are in the description below and as always get in the comments and let me know your predictions for the game follow my social media and subscribe to my group channel v offsiders the links are in the description below but with that being said guys let's end it there and there in the latest arsenal predictor land we preview the manchester city game of course it is a massive game at the etihad stadium and let's see if we are going to have our party indeed lads i will see you next time in a bit